good morning everyone so today we'll be starting with the topic of child psychology in pediatric dentistry so child psychology and its different stages of psychological development starting with introduction so what is psychology psychology is the science dealing with human nature function and phenomenon of his soul in the main basically the definition or the meaning of this definition is psychology is the science which deals with understanding the characteristics of how a human being functions how his thinking develops what are the factors which affect his character building and his thinking so it is a science which deals with human nature its function and phenomenon of his soul in the main in view of child psychology it is basically this science which deals with the mental power or interaction between the conscious and the subconscious elements in the minds of a child so as all of us might know the human mind it can be divided into three basic types something called as the conscious mind something called as the subconscious mind and something called as the preconscious mind so basically child psychology it is that science which deals with understanding of how this there is the interaction between this conscious and subconscious elements in a child so what is the importance of studying child psychology in students so aims and objectives of studying child psychology understanding child psychology helps us understand a child patient better so this will better help us in planning and providing the treatment or the care which the child requires and also help us in adapting various modalities which are necessary to take up to treat that child for example if we know the psychology of a child of a specific age we can adapt to various other means or various other methods which are available for child behavior management of that child okay so basically the first thing to understand is it that it helps us to understand the child patient better next thing is it helps us in better planning and interaction so if you know if you come to understand what is the psychology of a child how he is thinking how his uh, nature is how his character is being builded up what you can do is you can understand him in a way to interact with him in the correct manner and also help him in to develop his child psychology in a better way which is more acceptable to the society thirdly child psychology understanding helps us to identify problems of psychosomatic origin next is this this will also help us to understand the child's oral hygiene uh, maintenance procedures so uh, the child you can guide the child based upon his psychological issues of how he can maintain and keep his oral hygiene to the optimum level also as i earlier mentioned it will help us to modify the child's development process so before coming into child psychology we need to understand there are various theories which have been propagated for understanding how psychology develops in children so basically this theories can be classified into two basic types first thing is called as something as the psychodynamic theories and the another is called as the behavior learning theories psychodynamic theories they basically uh, dwell upon understanding of how the psychology develops and how it is dynamic so there are three basic theories which come under this first theory is the psycho sexual theory given by sigmund freud next theory is the psycho social theory given by eric erikson and third theory is the cognitive theory given by jean piaget in contrast to this behavior learning theories these theories basically state that how a behavior is learned by an individual so the uh, theories in this uh, heading come under classical conditioning theory given by ivan pavlov next is the operant conditioning theory given by bf skinner something called as a social learning theory also called as the modeling theory which was given by albert bandura and lastly is something called as hierarchy of needs given by abraham maslow so first coming on to the first uh, group of theories which is a the psychodynamic theories understanding of the first theory something called as a the psychosexual theory also called as the psychoanalytical theory given by sigmund freud now this is one of the earliest uh, theories in child psychology or understanding of child psychology that was that was given 
So the basics of this theory is Freud believed that the human body has two basic type of neurons, something called as the phi neuron and something called as the psi neuron. These phi neurons, they are concerned with condition of the emotion, how a person feels. And the psi neurons, they are concerned with the storage of these emotions. So now coming on to Freud's model, how he has described the mind. So Freud has used two models to describe the mind. There is something called as the topographic model and something called as the psychic triad model. The topographic model, this is also called as a geographical model because it basically classifies the mind uh, geographically into three basic parts. Uh, so something called as a conscious mind, something called as a pre-conscious mind and something called as the subconscious or previously it was, it was also called as the unconscious mind. So what is the conscious mind? So as the uh, word denotes, conscious mind is basically that part of the mind which is paying attention to what is happening in this present moment. So for example, suppose a student uh, is uh, playing cricket at this present moment. So the act of playing cricket or the act of bowling or the act of batting or even the act of as a fielder watching the game is basically what is concerned with the conscious mind. So you're conscious about an activity, you're conscious about a word, about a language, all those come from the conscious mind. So as you can see in the diagram, the conscious mind, it is basically filled up of present thoughts and perceptions. Your present thoughts and your present perceptions about the world. Nextly, there is something called as a pre-conscious mind. So pre-conscious mind, it involves ordinary memory and knowledge, things which we are aware of, but not paying attention at all moments. The classical example for a pre-conscious mind is general data or fact. For example, an individual's name. An individual is always aware and has the memory of his name. Uh, it is in his memory stored, okay? But he is not aware of it. Only when someone asks for his name, he would recall it from his mind. So that is what is pre-conscious mind. So pre-conscious mind, it involves ordinary memory and knowledge, things which a person is aware of, but is not paying attention at uh, the current moment. Then there is something called as a subconscious mind. So it is the part of the mind which thinks and acts independently. Basically, subconscious mind is the largest part of the brain or, or the mind, and it is filled up of all those things which we are unaware of. So uh, for example, certain fears that an individual has from birth, they can be associated to problems or they can be associated to knowledge in the subconscious mind. So certain violent motives, Im, uh, immoral urges, selfish needs, all those come under unconscious or the subconscious part of mind. So conscious part of mind is that part of mind which we are paying attention to at the present moment. Pre-conscious is any stored data and subconscious is that part which thinks and acts independently. As you can see in the diagram, Freud basically described this part as the mental iceberg model. This is the iceberg. So what he said is that the conscious part of the mind is that part which is just the tip of the iceberg. So what all things we are currently aware of, how much uh, our mind can currently focus on is just the tip behind this or inside of this tip, you will find the in, uh, urges, your in, uh, motives, your needs, okay? all those things, they are beneath this uh, conscious level. So this was the topographic model of Freud's concept. Next, coming on to the psychic triad model. Freud again stated that with the human mind, it can be divided into three parts, something called as the id, something called as the ego, and something called as the superego. So what is id? It is that part of the mind. It can also be uh, briefly explained as the instinctual desires. So it is that part of the mind which focuses on the satisfaction of uh, the instinctual desires. Basically, uh, it is that part of mind which focuses on immediate gratification or immediate pleasure. So as you can see in the diagram, it is that part of the mind which states that I want this object now. Next is ego. Ego is also called as the morality principle or the reality principle of the mind. So what does ego do is, 
ego basically works to satisfy what the id wants so ego what it does is ego will do the planning to get to the instinctual desire so for example id said i want it now ego says i need to do a planning to get the stuff okay so next is coming on to super ego super ego is also called as the policeman of the mind it is basically governed by society's morals and values so what super ego defines is super ego is basically the morals and values that the society will teach to the individual so super ego is like a policeman so super super ego will either say that you can go ahead and satisfy this id or you will not satisfy this id coming on to a basic example let us consider the example of an individual whose psychology is absolutely normal so what happens is that a uh, child or individual uh, he uh, wants a, a specific object or a specific toy or a specific chocolate what his id would do his id would go on and say that you should uh, obtain this object now next coming on to the ego the ego will do the planning to attain that object the ego would either train the child to go and ask his parents or to work for it depends what the super ego will do is that it will teach the child whether it is good to have uh, it will tell the child basically whether it is good to have the chocolate or not to good or not good to have the chocolate another classical example which we uh, which we can talk about is uh, consider the example of a child who is sitting in an examination hall and does not know the answer of a single question or a of or the present question so in that scenario what happens is now the child is sitting in the examination hall the question is in front of him so the id of the child says let's go and find the answer to this question maybe by doing copying or snatching the other uh, person's paper or uh, searching it from google or anything the id id just wants gratification it wants immediate satisfaction it wants the answer what the ego would do ego would plan how to do it now the suppose the child is sitting in an examination hall without any mobile phones or anything so what the ego will do ego will try to plan and copy it from the another student or maybe if the child is carrying any chit if the child is sitting at home the ego will make a plan to uh, search on the internet and then copy the answer depends the ego is basically doing the planning work next comes on the super ego now as i told you super ego is basically the morality principle that is being taught to the child so now if the child has been taught by the society that cheating is a bad habit so now the super ego will basically intervene between the id and ego and it will tell the id that this completion of the instinctual desire is not correct and it will tell the ego not to plan and do it if the super ego of the child is not developed to this reality principle if he is uh, if he believes or the society has taught him that cheating is common or doing this that is common then he would go ahead and do it so this is how it is classified so id is the basic structure of personality it serves as the reservoir of instincts so it is present at birth as impulse and strives for immediate pleasure and gratification example need to eat is based on pleasure principle that is the child wants food irrespective of external circumstances ego is that part of the self that is concerned with overall functioning and organization of personality it is the capacity to test reality so as i told you ego is basically the reality principle so uh, as you can see the child wanted to eat uh that was the basic principle of uh, the basic structure of the personality you know the ego is telling that hunger can wait until food is given to the child super ego it is that part of personality that is internalized representation of values and morals thought by the society in society who all come parents others your relatives everybody that comes under society the environment it is essentially an individual conscience and it judges whether the action is right or wrong so this was regarding the mind how the mind can be divided okay so just to categorize we are studying this is the theories we are studying about sigmund freud there are two basic models the topographic model and the psychic triad model now coming on 
to various stages that Sigmund Freud has given to understand a child's development. So psychosexual stages of development. Freud outlined five stages of sexual development. So the first stage in Freud's psychosexual stages of development is the oral stage. It spans from birth to one and a half years or 18 months of age. Now, what is the basic understanding of this oral stage? Freud basically believed that in this initial years of 18 months of a child after a child's birth, the erogenous zone or the zone of gratification uh, is the mouth area. So the erogenous zone is the mouth area or the oral activity. So if the mouth area is the erogenous zone, what would be the various uh, activities that would basically increase the pleasure? It would be called as the gratifying activities. So any activity that will stimulate the oral cavity, for example, nursing, if which involves breastfeeding, bottle feeding, or any mouth movements such as sucking, biting, and swallowing, all these are gratifying activities. Next is interaction with environment. So how does this stage affect a child's personality? So the child's personality is controlled by the id and demands immediate gratification. So responsive nurturing is the key. What this line basically means is during this stage, now when a child is hungry, his id states that now he needs food. So the child will start to cry and demand immediate gratification. So how should uh, a parent or the environment interact? responsible nurturing should be given. Whenever a child demands for food, a responsible nurturing, not over nurturing, not uh, less nurturing, both would be detrimental in the psychological development. Symptoms, now in Freud's all these stages, what basically happens is Freud stated, stated that these all are stages and these all are the erogenous zones and these all are the gratifying activities in these zones. Whenever a person overdoes or underdoes any of these things, so these are various uh, gratifying activities. So what basically happens, whether there is overstimulation or understimulation, a child would be fixated into a certain state. So symptoms of oral fixation would involve smoking, nail biting, drinking, or sarcastic nature. Next stage is the anal space. So as it suggests, the erogenous zone would be the anal muscles. The uh, time period is one and a half to three years of age. Gratifying activities here would be usage of the muscular uh, mus muscles which are used for bowel movements. So basi basically uh, bowel movements and withholding of such movements. The child gets pleasure by using the muscles of with, uh, by using the muscles withholding his bowel or either releasing his bowel. Interaction with the environment is toilet training. So this actually means is the child at this stage is the stage when he can be uh, correctly thought about toilet training, whether it is good to expulse his bowel at a particular place and where it is not good, the timing and everything. So toilet training can be done in such stage. What would be the symptoms of inner fixation? The child would develop into two basic extremes of personality, something called as the anal expulsive personality and something called as the anal retentive personality. In anal expulsive personality, how his character would develop? The child would be sloppy in nature. He would be disorganized in his day-to-day -day activities. He would be careless, not caring much. Next is anal retentive personality. In anal retentive personality, the classical thing which we can see is the development of something called as OCD or the obsessive compulsive disorder. The child in such cases would uh, be having a nature of very cleanly orderliness and there would be utter intolerance to uncleanliness. Next comes the phallic stage. The phallic stage is the stage which expands from four to five years of age. The erogenous zone in the phallic stage is the genitals. The, so the gratifying activity would be genital fondling. Interaction with the environment is child feeling of greater attachment with parent of opposite sex. So there are basically two basic things which happen in the genital, uh, in the phallic stage that you should understand. There is something called as the Oedipus complex and something called as the Electra complex.
So as you can see, the erogenous zone is genital gratifying activity is genital fondling. So what basically happens is how the child's nature interacts with the environment. The child starts to develop feelings or has or starts to have greater attachment with the parent of the opposite sex. So a boy child will have greater attachment for his mother and a girl child will start to having greater attachment for his father. So what will happen basically is uh, when there is a boy child, he starts to have greater attachment for his mother, but he has a father at his home. The male is also present. So the child basically, and when the child uh, realizes that the father and mother are together, he basically starts to have envy towards his father. Okay. So uh, that is what is called as Oedipus complex. Tendency of a young boy, child being attached more to mother than father. So the child starts to have envy towards his father and more love towards his mother. Similarly for girls, girl will start to have more love towards her father and more envy towards her mother. So how there is resolution of this stage? Basically, when a child, take the example of a boy child, what happens is uh, the boy child starts to envy his father. But at a certain uh, time in the mind, he realizes that he cannot compete with his father. So what the child does is, what his mind does is, he tries to mirror his father. So all the things that his father likes, the way that his father talks, the, basically the personality of his father, the child will try to copy that. Why he will try to copy that? To gain more attention of his mother. This is how this stage is resolved. Similarly for girls, the girls would uh, you can particularly see the children of this age, they would start to wear uh, and do, uh, start to dress up like their mothers. So basically they are trying to imitate their mothers to at, uh, grab more attention for their fathers. Next stage is the latency stage. As the word already suggests, this stage is the stage in which there is latency. So the time period is five years to puberty. There is no erogenous zone that is in focus at this stage. So where does the energy of the child go? If you can see, this is the stage in which the child would be going to his school. So interaction with the environment is that the child focuses more energy on other aspects of life. That is culture forming beliefs and values, developing friendships and engaging in sports. So basically this is the peer uh, school peer age group. So rather than uh, being dwelled in all the previous stages, the child now goes to the school, uh, participates in school activities, forms beliefs, values, and forms friendships and engages in sports. Last stage of uh, Freud's uh, psychosexual theory is the genital stage. This stage starts from puberty and lasts until the death of the child, as stated by Freud. So erogenous zone again here is the genital areas. Here the gratifying activity is heterosexual relationships. Now once the child has reached puberty and he is now looking for having heterosexual relationships or relationships with people of the opposite sex. So in interaction with the environment would be there would be marked pursuit for relationship. The child would uh, make more friends with people of the opposite sex, also of the same sex. Okay. So what is the symptoms of genital fixation? Now you should understand one thing. According to Freud, this genital fixation, this stage in its own would not cause any fixation. This genital stage would not cause any fixation. If there is any difficulty, it has occurred due to a fixation in any of the previous stages. So suppose there was a fixation in the oral stage, the child at this age would be having habits such as smoking. He would have a more of a sarcastic behavior. If there is an uh, retentive type of personality, the child would be more narcissistic, OCD type. Okay, so similarly, the child's psychology would shape. Now this is regarding the review of all we have seen. So birth to one years, we are birth to one and a half years, we are in the oral stage. So infant's pleasure centers on the mouth. One and a half to three years, we are in the anal stage, focuses on the inner region. Three to five years, phallic stage, genitals. Then five years to puberty, latency stage, puberty onwards, genital stage. Next, coming on to the merits and demerits of Freud's theory. 
So one of the, the merit of this Freud theory is that it is the one of the earliest and most comprehensive theory of lifelong psychological development. Demerits include Freud formulated this theory by his own extensive studies on adult psychological patients. And hence, there is extrapolation of this theory to children that cannot be justified. The theory is based on the obsessed observation of the psychologists. This is also being stated by many other psychologists. Okay. So next, coming on to the second psycho psychological theory, which is the psychosocial theory by Eric Erikson, given in the year 1963. Now, one should remember Erickson, he is basically a student and a follower of Freud, but he believed that uh, the basic, if you have understood Freud's theory, you would have understand, understood one central point. The central point of Freud's theory was instinctual desires or the basics. So Freud believed that just only the biological instinctual desires these are not the only thing which motivates a child's behavior. There are many things ahead of this also. So that is where he broke off. So Eric Erickson was a follower of Sigmund Freud who broke with his teacher over the fundamental point of what motivates or drives human behavior. For Freud, it was basically biology or more specifically the biological instincts of life and aggression. The meeting of the instinctual desires, be it hunger, be it sex, be it relationships. Okay, this was what Freud believed. However, Sigmund Freud believed that there is more to this uh, than just the biological instincts. He developed his eight stages of man development theory and it was unique in that it covered the entire lifespan rather than just child and adolescent development. If you have understood Freud's theory, you must have noticed Freud theory, it just ended after puberty. It, the last stage it stated puberty onwards. But Sigmund Freud has basically given a comprehensive theory that encircles even the birth till the death of an individual. So Erickson was of the view that the social environment combined with the biological maturation provides each individual with a set of crises that must be resolved. So the basic thing is same. The, uh, Freud also believed that there are specific stages. Erickson again believed that there were specific stages. As fixation was observed in Freud's stages, Erickson also believed in every stages, you get a crisis situation. And this crisis situation must be resolved by the individual. And how come this crisis situation is presented? This crisis situation not only comes from just the biological point, it also comes from the social environment per se. The individual is provided with a sensitive period in which to successfully resolve each crisis before a new crisis is presented. The results of the resolution, whether successful or not, are carried forward to the next crisis and provide the foundation for its resolution. So these are the stages of Eric Erickson's uh, developmental theory. First stage is, as you can see here, this is the ladder stage of life, which was given by Eric Erickson. So first stage is the trust versus mistrust stage. This stage is synonymous with the oral stage given by Sigmund Freud. The child either develops trust or either develops mistrust towards his society. To consider an example, for example, a child, an infant, if he has uh, the instinctual desire of being hungry, and if his desires is met by his mother or the society, the child would develop a trust. Conversely, if it is not met, the child would develop a mistrust. Uh, climbing onto the ladder, the next stage is autonomy versus shame and doubt. This is the stage which is, which is synonymous to the stage of anal stage of uh, Freud. For example, this is the stage, it is the toddler stage. Toddler stage is a stage when the child starts to experience or experiment with the world. He will basically try to crawl, stand, do try to try to uh, exercise his muscles. So, if the child is motivated to do his uh, activities, then he would develop an autonomy over his character. He would become independent in life. Whereas, if the child is uh, criticized for his uh, autonomous behavior, he would either develop shame that his activity is wrong or he would develop doubt in his activity. So the self-confidence of the child would go down. That is what this uh, 
stage means climbing on to the next stage the next stage is initiative versus guilt this is the stage which is the preschooler stage now the child starts to experiment with the world he try he starts to do things on his own he will start to take a pencil and start drawing okay so the child starts to take initiative if the initiative is uh, if the initiative is uh, clapped up by the parents if the parents think that the child is doing good he would develop higher self confidence and greater self esteem and conversely the opposite next stage is the industry versus inferiority this is the stage in which the child goes to the school now he is going to the school so he is basically sitting in a peer pressure in this peer pressure he now faces the competition and everything that comes with it so he is if he resolves this stage correctly he would develop industrious or basically he would develop more productive and if he cannot do it he would go into having something called as inferiority or the inferiority complex jumping on to the ladder next stage is when the child enters teenage so there is something called as identity versus role confusion so now the child has become a teenage so basically he is now trying to find out his own identity in the society he now believes more in what his friends suggest rather than what his parents suggest so that is what is called as identity having his own identity the child is trying to have an identity versus role confusion if there is not correct resolution of the crisis at this stage the child would not have an identity and rather be confused about his identity about his role in the society after that the next stage is intimacy versus isolation this is the stage after the teenage stage now the child is a young adult so he would start to develop the intimate relationships now suppose there is a child who who has gone through these stages correctly for example he was pleaded he he developed trust towards the society he has autonomy he is Uh, good in taking initiatives he is industrious he has developed his own identity and now uh, in the world and now when he is going for the intimacy stage do you believe he would go for intimation or isolation so the answer is he would go for intimation because the resolution of the uh, prior stages they have been correct so the child goes into the correct resolution of this stage also he develops intimacy versus something called as isolation for example let's take another example the child does not trust the society he does not trust anyone the child has doubts on his activities he is guilty of starting anything he has something called as inferiority complex he is confused about his role in the society about his own identity so he would live a life of isolation so that is what eric erickson basically stated that not just the biological instincts but also how there is interaction with the society of a child they both shape the child's behavior and this shaping happens in a ladder wise manner there is a stage and there is a crisis of every stage and there are two basic outcomes of these stages how the child resolves through these stages and move up, moves upwards is how his life would go on so after having intimacy versus isolation the next stage was generativity versus stagnation now this is the stage in which the child is now uh, becoming an adult or has become an adult so now his focus is more towards creating others of his own kind so the child now goes on to reproduce so that is something called as generativity he has a intimate relationship with someone so now he is generating that there is process of reproduction so there is generativity in the cycle of human beings versus stagnation so the other part would be stagnation wherein there is isolation the child is isolated he is depressed so there would be stagnation of his life the last stage in this stage is integrity versus despair this is the final stage or the older age stage of eric erickson stage so integrity is when the child looks back at his life at all the stages of his life and he basically believes that all through his life he has led a good life so the, now the person would feel integrity about his own life he would be happy that he had trust autonomy he was industrious he had intimacy he generated so his life he lived in integrity versus despair so this is the state wherein there would be despair the child now is in despair he is not happy okay so now coming on to this is the basic uh, this is basically how you can even uh, 
correlate Sigmund's Freud stages of development along with Eric Erikson's stages of personality development. So you can see the oral stage of Freud, it basically is interacting with the stage of basic trust versus mistrust. The anal stage of Freud, it interacts with the autonomy versus shame. The phallic stage interacts with the initiative versus guilt. Latency with industry versus inferiority. Genital stage with identity versus role confusion. And these are all the adult stages which Eric Erikson has separately classified. So Eric Erikson's eight stages, first, trust, first stage is basic trust versus mistrust. Child develops a belief that the environment can be counted on to meet his or her basic physiological and uh, uh, social needs. So the child was given the uh, feeding or was not given the feeding. So the child basically develops that this environment can be counted on. He can have a trust or he can have a mistrust. The ages birth to one years, totally dependent on others. Caregiver meets the needs of the child. So child develops trust. Caregiver does not meet needs of the child. Child develops mistrust. Coming on to dental application, this stage identifies with the development of separation anxiety in the child. So if necessary, so the dental application is, this stage identifies with the development of separation anxiety in the child. If the child has developed trust towards the society, he would have anxiety in being separated from his parents. So if necessary to provide dental treatment at this stage earlier on, it is preferable to do with the parent present and preferably with the parent holding the child. As you would do in any child with separation anxiety, you should always treat the children with the parents present and also with the parent being near the child and holding the child. Once the child loses basic trust with the world, it is very difficult to gain confidence of the child and will require special efforts to establish support with the dentist and the staff. So the next stage is autonomy versus shame and doubt. The child learns what he, she can control and develops a sense of free will and corresponding sense of regret and sorrow for inappropriate use of self-control. The ages are from one to three years of age. Child is able to exercise some degree of choice. Child's independence is sorted. Child develops feelings of self-doubt, shame in dealing with others. Basic strength is development of willpower. So basically, this is the stage of one to three years. Child in this stage, he understands what he can control and develops a sense of what he can do. If he's given the opportunity to, to exercise, then he develops something called as autonomy. If his independence is thwarted, then he develops shame and doubt. Dental application is, now the child is growing, so he's moving away from his mother but he will still retreat to her in threatening situations because she is a trusted uh, parent. So parents' presence is essential in the dental clinic. At this stage, as the child takes pleasure in doing tasks by himself, dentist must obtain cooperation by making him believe that the treatment is his choice, not his parents or the dentists. Third stage is initiative versus guilt which occurs in the early childhood. The child learns to begin action, to explore, to imagine, as well as there are feelings of remorse for his actions. So the child, he starts to take initiatives. If he is uh, motivated, he will be initiative. And if not, he would go into guilt that why did he do this experiment? So child expresses desires to take initiative in activities. Parents punish child for being for this initiative, the child will develop feelings of guilt that will affect the self-directed activity throughout his life. Now, dental application could be very easy. The child is taking initiative, so you can use that. Child can be encouraged to view this visit as a new adventure and encouraged to genuine success in it. If this visit fails, it can lead to sense of guilt in the child. He is inherently teachable at this stage and so can be thought about the various things in dental setup. Industry versus inferiority is the next stage which occurs in middle childhood. Child learns to do things well 
or correctly in comparison to a standard or to others. If a child develops cognitive abilities to enable in task completion, parents, teachers, this is the positive outcome. If the child is uh, gone through all the stages positively, in this stage, he learns to do things well and correctly in comparison to others, the child develops cognitive abilities in his completion. If the parents or teachers do not support child's efforts, child will develop feelings of inferiority and inadequacy. Dental application is, child drives for sense of industry and accomplishment. Cooperation with treatment can be obtained. This needs to be positively reinforced. Cooperation at this stage depends on whether he or she understands what is needed to please the dentist or the parents, whether the peer group is supportive and whether the desired behavior is reinforced by the dentist. Next stage is identity versus role confusion, the teenage stage or the adolescent stage develops a sense of self in relationship to others and to own internal thoughts and desires. So there is formation of social identity and there is formation of personal identity. Age group is 12 to 18 years. There's a strong sense of indirect identity, faces adulthood with certainty and confidence. So if at this stage, the child develops something called as identity, he would face adulthood with certainty and confidence. Identity crisis is confusion of ego identity. If the child is involved in crisis, he would have something called as role confusion. Behavior management of adolescents can be very challenging. So any orthodontic treatment should be carried out if the child wants it and not if the parents have asked the child to come. Because in this stage, the child is trying to develop his own identity. So he would reject the parental authority. Approval of peer group is more important than the parents. Next stage is intimacy versus isolation. This is the stage of young adulthood. The child develops ability to give and receive love, begins to make long-term commitment to relationships. Ages involved are 18 to 35. The child undertakes productive work and establishes intimate relationships. There is inability to establish intimacy, which leads to social isolation. The basic strength here would be love. At this stage, external appearances are very important as it helps in attainment of intimate relation. These young adults seek orthodontic treatment to correct their dental appearances, and this is characterized as internal motivation. But alteration of appearances can also interfere with previously established relations. So the treatment options must be fully explained to and discussed with the young adults. Next stage is the generativity versus stagnation. So the child develops interest or the adult in develops interest in guiding the development of the next generation. The age group associated is 35 to 55 years. Generativity is the act of being actively involved in teaching or guiding the next generation. Stagnation involves not seeking outlets for generativity. Next stage is the ego, integrity versus despair. This is the later stage. So, child, so the individual develops a sense of acceptance of the life. He has now accepted how he has lived his life as it was lived and the importance of people and relationships that individual developed over the lifespan. The age group here is more than 55 years of age. Evaluation of entire life is what happens over here. Integrity is the person looks back at his life with satisfaction. And despair is he reviews his life with anger and frustration. Next, coming on to the merits and demerits of Eric Erickson stage. Eric Erickson stage, the merit is it is based on age-wise classification of an individual. Hence, it was easy to apply at any stage of development simple and comprehensive to understand. Demerits, it is based on extremes of personality. What the, basically the demerit is, the demerit is that, is that there are two extremes. Eric Erickson gave two extremes of personality, either this or that. 